All right, hey guys. Uh, so welcome to this video tutorial on financial modeling. So part of the reason I wanted to make this tutorial was, you know, when I was trying to learn how to build a financial model, I found it was pretty difficult to find resources. And, you know, even, you know, even finding resources on how to do a discounted cash flow model was, was probably easier than just finding resources on how to just, you know, create a set of statements in Excel that all flow together. So just to get started. I downloaded some financials. Um, the company I'm going to be modeling is Toys R Us um, because this is sort of a, a toy model, so why not why not go with a toy company? Um, so as you can see, this is uh, this is pretty intense here. We got a lot a lot of information. So what I did is I just sort of consolidated this into revenue, cost of goods sold, SG&A, depreciation, interest expense, unusual items, taxes, and net income. And then same thing with the balance sheet, you know, really just, just kind of pared it down from, from all these deferred tax assets and, you know, accrued expenses and unearned revenue. I just kind of made it, uh, made it a little simpler with cash, receivables, inventory, and other, and, uh, you know, net PP&E and other long-term assets and basically just cleaned up these statements. Uh, so, you know, I think it's a good thing when you do build a financial model to, to really have as maybe as little information as is necessary but you know make sure you have all the all the stuff you need in there and then when you're doing this one thing I did I'm just gonna show you the formulas is you know I linked back to the original sheets and I also made it so that you know when you have uh, these things they're formulas they're not just hard-coded in there so these total current assets net PP&E current liabilities, all that stuff is getting added up and so that one useful shortcut when you want to see just everything just because I can't see what I'm doing on the keyboard is that control squiggle. It's going to show you what's actually inside the cells. Okay, so let's just get started here. Um, so usually almost all financial models that project forward into the future are going to have basically a, a set of assumptions and a lot of those are going to be based on revenue growth. So you know, the first place to start um, whenever you're doing any kind of model is just to look at what happened in the past. So let's look at what happened in the past with revenue growth. No, sorry. This one. Okay, so we have 2.2% in 2011. Control R, fill to the right. Um, looks like revenue growth has gone negative a little bit. So let's not necessarily choose a rate yet, but let's just know that we have to have something. So right now, you know, I like I like five percent as maybe a place to start. We can always go back and change that later. Um, and this isn't this isn't necessarily supposed to be a realistic you know projection of what's going to happen. This is just to show you how the statements work together. So one thing I'm going to do is get this growth rate and this that. And you can just grow it by whatever growth rate in that year. So right now what I'm going to do is just have it so that every cell is linked back to that original cell, this 2015 rate. Um, and we can change that later also. Okay, and I'm just formatting uh, this. So I'm using the uh, training the street macros. Training the street's really cool. I got the opportunity to do that, and that was super helpful. Um, they have some formatting macros, but you know, if you don't have the formatting macros, definitely you can use this guy up there. If you want to reduce or increase the number of decimal spots, you can uh, use these buttons up here. But anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna use these macros I already have. All right, so cost of goods sold is another thing you want to look at. So right now, I'm going to look at cost of goods sold as a percent of revenue. So, oops, no, that was supposed to be an up arrow. Let's look at that percent of revenue. So it looks about 
So what you'll see a lot of times is, you know, when you're looking at something as a percent of revenue or percent of cogs, you're really, I mean, a lot of the time you're just going to use an average. Sometimes, you know, the management will provide um, projections for what they think these things are going to be. But let's just look at the average of that, 64.3%. And let's just say, all right, well, let's just keep that going forward. So it's the right control R. And so now, what did we just do? We looked at cost of goods sold as a percent of revenue. So if we want to project cost of goods sold, what we want to do is take revenue, and then multiply by what it is as a percent of revenue. And another thing I'm going to do here is if you're looking at that as, like, say, a percent of revenue, you might want to note that in the assumptions that that's what you're looking at, because it could be, you know, anything else. So what I'm going to do is press F2 to edit the cell and just write in percent. And I'm going to do the same thing with SGNA. Format it, make it into a percentage. Let's see what we're at. 27 31%. Let's look at um, average. So, average, I'm going to press tab. Press tab, you don't have to finish writing it. And here we go, average of 28%. Let's just fill that to the right. Okay. Depreciation. Um, actually, quick, let me just let me see this is percent revenue. So, depreciation is more of like a, a thing that's based on, I'm oh, sorry, this is depreciation. You know, that's really not necessarily going to be a revenue driven thing. I mean, it could be revenue driven, it could be driven, but usually you're looking at depreciation as a, as a percentage of net PP&E. So I have net PP&E over here. And, you know, maybe later on in a different video I can go into what really drives depreciation. And really it's about the useful life of assets and, and the return on capital. But right now let's just take depreciation as a percentage of net PP&E. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number, which is the 2010 uh, depreciation, and I'm going to divide by... Net PP in 2010. So that's 92%. But you know, actually, I'm thinking when you're looking at a balance sheet, this number, net PP and E, that's at the end of the year, not the beginning of the year. So really, you know, I think it makes more sense to look at you know, 2011 depreciation that happened in the year. So that's 388, and divide that by the years before its depreciation, or the year before its net PPE. Okay, 1.5%. Now I'm just going to roll that forward. So it looks like about 10% about a year. Um, so that, you know, interesting side note, this sort of implies that you know, the useful life of assets is about 10 years. I mean, that's assuming straight line depreciation, but basically we can almost infer that the useful life of assets is about uh, 10 years. Oops. I'm just going to grab the average here, roll it over. All right, interest expense. Um, sorry, I keep going back, but I just want to make this percent of net PPE. All right, interest expense. So interest expense is going to be driven also by a balance sheet item, and that's that's pretty much long-term debt and what you know the company's interest rate is. So again, if you're doing a if you're doing a full model, I mean, you definitely want to be looking into the financial statements, saying, okay, what's their interest expense? You know, what's their interest rate? How much? Debt do they have? What I'm going to do um, instead is just look at uh, the interest expense here, net interest expense, 
divided by um, you know I'm actually going to take the average over the year and you could do that with um with depreciation because really what you want is this is this here is the interest expense in 2011 and here on the balance sheet you have the balance sheet at the end of 2011 and the balance sheet at the end of 2010 so really you want the average um, during the year of what your either your debt was or your net pp and e so i'm actually going to go back here and just change this to be average of past two years same thing with interest expense so you want to take this interest expense and divide by average of long-term debt over the two years let's just pull this forward and let's pull this forward okay so we're getting about 10 percent so about so you can see here in 2011 uh, Toys R Us was paying 514 dollars 514 these are thousands Five millions Eight millions or thousands I guess I should check that right in millions okay so 514 million on how much debt about five billion in debt alright unusual items so unusual items are kind of interesting I'm just gonna make these a percent of revenue but actually um, when I project them I usually project unusual items as zero unless you know, the management suggests otherwise, but it's good to look at what they have then. You could present, project them as a percentage of cost of goods sold as well. I mean, it's this, I mean, these are very marginal amounts. Okay, and tax rate again, tax rate, you know, you'd want to look at a 10k to find if this is a public company, I mean, it's a private company, you know. If you're modeling a private company, you probably have a good reason to, so you wouldn't know what their tax rate is. But if it's a public company, they're all, they will also say it in their 10K. And we can look at what it was. We take tax expense over earnings before taxes. And this is going to be their effective tax rate. Okay. So earnings before taxes. Their tax, their tax rate is negative. Um, in a lot of these years and what that could be is from you know operating loss carry forwards uh, I mean there's a there's a variety of things it could be from um, so you know into the future like why don't we just use uh, like a 35 percent marginal tax rate I didn't I didn't look at this company um, a lot before making this video, so I don't know the, the specifics, but I mean, it makes me wonder what their average is, just out of curiosity. So they have some sort of tax benefit going on that we don't really know about. Um, the average here. Move forward. And this, I'm just going to literally just enter in, enter in zero. Okay, so we made a set of assumptions. Uh, they're probably not very good assumptions. Uh, we didn't spend very much time on them, uh, but they are a set of assumptions, and we can use these to project forward. So we already did that with revenue. Uh, fast food sold. Oops. Now I'm going to add a line here and use the shortcut Alt-HBO to add a line underneath and take 
revenue minus cost of goods sold. That's going to give us gross profit. Pull that over to the right. Oh, where'd my uh, my line go? Oh, it must have. Come on. Get rid of that. Okay. All HBO should work here. There we go. And SGNA, we did that as a percent of revenue as well. Yes. That times SGNA percent of revenue. All right, and depreciation and amortization is going to be a percentage of net PPE. We don't know what net PPE is going into the future yet because we haven't made any assumptions about capital expenditures. So um, let's just leave that and let it chill for now. Net interest expense, uh, we haven't made any assumptions about financing yet, so don't really, we're not ready for that yet. Tax expense, All right, we'll just deal with this stuff later. Let's go over to the balance sheet. Okay, so we got a balance sheet here. Uh, we want to figure out. Okay, let's do some assumptions really quickly for accounts receivable, inventory, other current assets, accounts payable. You know, if we have to do anything else, we'll um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So accounts receivable as a percentage of. So usually, one what you want to do with accounts receivable is, you know, that depends on how much you're selling. So that's another revenue based thing. So right now, let's figure out what that was. So we have. 2002 and 2010 um, divide by the revenue in 2010. And again, this is another place where you're really, you know, the best practice would be to use the average because you know you have accounts receivable at the end of the year and you have uh, you have your revenue during the year. But I mean, this is fine. We can just do this. Okay, inventory. Usually, inventory we look at as a percentage of cost of goods sold. Um, so let's go back here and divide by cogs. Oops, what's that? So twenty percent inventory. Um, you'll sometimes see people convert this into days in inventory. So if you multiply this 20% times 365, then you'll get the number of basically days of inventory that a company has. Um, same things with receivables, you know, 1.5% times 365. That'll give you, you know, on average, how long does it take to, before this company uh, gets paid? Um, so, other current assets. Let's just do this. Current assets divided by okay, pretty standard, and um, accounts payable. Let's also run that one. Probably best to look at as as a percentage of cost of goods sold because you're looking at how long it takes before you pay your suppliers. So payables divided by cogs control R to fill right. Okay, so we looked at revenue. Uh, we looked at inventory percent cogs. It's a percent of revenue, and accounts payable is a percent of cogs. So really, you know, revenue is driving everything here because revenue is also driving cogs, but. Um, we didn't do uh, so. Inventory is percentage of cons. That's right, right? I think so. 
All right, so we have these assumptions now. So equals, let's grab the averages and just pull them over. Oops. And again, this is these are some very very simplifying assumptions. Okay, so first receivables here. So what a receivable is going to be here. That times revenue in 2015. And inventory. Um, other and accounts payable as percent of possible. So, so payables over here. Right now, this should be that times that payable times cost of goods sold. Okay, and then you can kind of just do a sanity check. Like, is this number close to this number? Is this number close to this number? Like, yeah, 249 and 237, they look pretty similar. So you're good. So if you're doing like a full a full model with like a lot of moving parts, this would be your, your networking capital schedule. But we're not doing that many moving parts, so we're just doing networking capital down here at the bottom of the balance sheet. These are all basically working capital assumptions. Alright, what's next? Put this stuff forward. Okay, so we've we've made some progress. We have some networking capital assumptions. And so last, let's go over to this cash flow statement and start thinking about, you know, um, what our capital expenditure, debt issuance, equity issuance is going to be. So let's just look at what's going on. We have net, you know, they pay off some debt, take on more debt, pay off some debt, take on more debt, pay off some debt. So it looks like for this, in the interest of time, I'm just going to assume that their debt stays the same. So their net debt issuance or repayment is going to be zero. But just because it's zero doesn't mean that I can just enter zero here. I want to make sure I'm referencing that here. Okay. Um, capital expenditures. So capital expenditures is is really interesting because that you know capital expenditures is what's going to drive revenue performance. But how much how much capital expenditures do you need? So I mean this is this is a huge question. I mean we could just spend we could spend hours on this, but we're assuming five percent revenue growth. Um, let's look really quickly. Sometimes you just look and you explore. You kind of have to explore the financial statements. So I'm just going to go down here where I have some space and go equals. What I want to look at right now is, is what is PPE divided by revenue? So right now we're going. That's 13 ppe. So it, like, does that number stable? So it looks like what's happening is, I guess. Well, let's let's think of what what's really going on. Sorry, I don't mean to um, go off on a tangent, but what is here uh, the return 
on basically let's think about the return on PPE so let's take revenue and instead of doing it the other way let's take revenue um, let's take the change in revenue minus that so 296 and let's divide that by let's look at the change in PPE net PPE so we have that minus that. Okay. So here revenue increased and in, in net PPE went down. Does that always happen? Yeah, so it looks like you know the asset base is decreasing and revenue is decreasing. So if we increase the asset base, we would sort of assume that that would drive revenue. Um, again, this is a thing that you could just, I mean, this is a rabbit hole, but let's just say if we're projecting 5% growth, let's imagine that we need to grow net PP&E by 5% each year. So. Come over to the cash flow statement. Let's make this capex as a percent of net. PPE. Sorry, I just went off on that tangent. Let's just make this 5% as well. But again, I mean, this is, you know, if you're spending a long time building a model, this is really the stuff you want to be thinking about. Okay, so now now this is kind of interesting, right? So we have a 5% growth in net PP&E. So how much CapEx do we need? We need last year's net PP&E, 36.38 times 5%. Okay, so that's our capex is going to be 181, and so we're we're on the cash flow statement, and that is a use of cash. So let's make that negative. Yes, that costs us money. Okay. Right. Okay, and so now what we need to do is actually well, I'm gonna let's flow everything onto the balance sheet later. Okay, so depreciation, that's another thing that we have over here on the income statement, which is a percentage of net PP and E. Um, so actually I guess yeah, let's let's bring net PP and E forward. So what does that mean? That means that you take net PP and E in 2014 and add well actually here. You take PP and E at cost. Add capex here. Except that here we have it as a use use of cash, so we have to deal with the sign problem. Because if we just add it here, um, that capex, which is negative cash, is actually positive in terms of adding to our our new PP at cost. Okay, so depreciation. Come over here and what do we say 10% for a depreciation. So depreciation. This is going to equal our depreciation as a percentage of net PP me times what's our net PP me last year? 36, 38. Okay, format it, put it over to the right, and now what do we have to do? We have to take this depreciation here, 
and add it there. So again, we're gonna we have a assigned problem so because what we want to do is take this whatever our accumulated depreciation was before and subtract whatever our depreciation is that we added. So what did we add? 364 and then oops. There we go. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, but now let's think about this. We're growing CapEx at 5% of net PP&E, and we're growing depreciation at 10% of net PP&E. So that actually doesn't make sense, right? So let's take CapEx and let's make this. We want our asset base to be growing. So since we're depreciating 10%, let's actually CapEx, let's say 15%, because then we're actually growing things at 5%. We're not just, yeah. I mean, you get it. Okay, so accumulated depreciation. Let's pull this over to the right. And right, so now we have our net PPE all done. Good stuff. All right, what's next? And kind of, you know, you kind of flip back and forth here. Um, you don't really, it's not like you have one thing. So let's go back to the income statement and say, okay, we need net interest expense. So we assumed that our financing uh, is going to be zero. So remember over here we have zero dollars of debt issuance and repayment. And that's, that's just a dollar amount. So we have this referencing that. Zero dollars there. So let's go to our balance sheet and we can take our long term debt. And our long term debt is going to equal uh, last year's debt plus debt issuance. And let's think quickly about whether we want to add or subtract it here. So issuing debt, uh, it's going to be a, a source of cash. So if this number is positive, that means that debt's going to go up. So yeah, we want to. We want to add it there. Okay, um, so we have that. So now we have our interest expense, which is going to equal 10% times our long term debt in that year. And I guess it's actually going to be 10% times the average. Debt, but the average is going to be the same, so let's just leave it there for now. We'll fix it later if it gets messed up. Sometimes, you know, it takes practice. You just do this stuff and then you fix it on the fly if that's, you know, if the balance sheet doesn't balance or whatever, and we'll deal with that later. I mean, maybe it won't balance. I mean, I think it'll balance. But, you know, we'll see. Okay, so now we, we can get an operating income too. So take. Just make sure I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording. Okay, so we take this. Just gonna minimize there. So equals gross profit minus sum of these two. No, oh, that looks good. It's a lot of gross profit. All right, awesome. Alright, so we have that, and we have interest expense, because that's not going to change, it's just 10% of our long-term debt, and we're imagining that we're just basically rolling over all our long-term debt. So unusual items, I think I said this was going to be zero, right? Let's just reference that here. And now we can actually get two um, earnings before taxes. That is going to be our operating income minus the sum of unusual items and interest expense. So, 
right? We got earnings before taxes and you know tax expense. Uh, interest is tax deductible, and that's just going to be our whatever our tax rate is times earnings before taxes. Cool. Looks awesome. <clears throat> Fold that out. And access let's just roll this over to the right. Alright. So now we basically get net income. Earnings before taxes, minus taxes. Oops. Fold that out. Okay, awesome. We got net income. So we got now we have our full pro forma income statement. So that's that's a big piece of the puzzle. All right. So as we know from accounting 101, where does net income go? Well, net income is the first line of the cash flow statement. So let's make this back to net income. Alright, and depreciation. We want to add a depreciation over here from our income statement because I think that's where our main depreciation is. Okay, receivables. Where's our receivables? That's basically a networking capital, and we have that on our balance sheet. And so the cash flow statement, we're looking at the change in receivables. So what we want to do is, if receivables goes down, that's a use of cash. If it goes up, it's a source of cash. Um, is that right? No, no, no. Sorry, that's payables. So receivables are bad. That's uh, where I minimize receivables. So let's take cash flow statement equals receivables went down but if receivables went down that was the use of cash so let's do let's flip these you can either make it negative or you can flip these I'm gonna flip these control X and do 2014 minus 2015 I'm at it Pull it over to the right. Okay. So now we got receivables, inventory. Inventory goes up. That's a, that's a use of cash. So we can state in balance sheet. So whether or not you add or subtract depends on. Basically, what side of the balance sheet something is on? Is it an is it an asset or a liability? So, for example, payables. It's the other way, right? Payables is this minus this. So, if payables went down, that means that we get uh, we get less cash. Pull that over. And what's this last one? Other. Okay, other. Um, well, I think that we're just going to keep everything else. Everything else is going to stay the same. So other is just going to be basically zero. And we could actually manually put everything in and you know, use, like, I guess we would say use, like, um, the... the Adding and subtracting, but since we know it's going to be zero, that's totally fine. Just add it in the zero there. But maybe the the best way to do it would be to, you know, take this zero and make it the change in all the other current assets and liabilities. Okay, so that's going to this should give us cash from operations. I'm going to use my favorite shortcut, Alt equals. It gives me the sum. that out. 
So this is our cache from operations. Other here. This is going to be zero also. And so we have these big sort. We have these big uses of cache with capex. All right, equity issuance and repurchase we haven't talked about, but again, we can leave that. We can basically leave that at zero for now. Um, and then if you have some sort of format that you like and you don't have a shortcut, you can always use the Format Painter. Awesome, awesome tool. And if you double-click the Format Painter, you can use it over, over and over again. Okay, but we're not using the Format Painter. So equity issuance. Same thing. Let's link back to equity issuance. We're not issuing any equity. Dividends. Um, I guess we really should again project dividends because it's important. Um, but again, we're going to leave them at zero for now. And and when you're building a model, like Leaving things at zero is your best friend because then you, know, you can just slowly incorporate and make it more and more complicated. But if you if you make all these assumptions up front, then you know, your model just gets hairier and hairier. Other financing activity. Zero. We're basically saying that like. Finance-wise, this company is going to stay the same. There's going to be very little cash from financing. Anything other financing activity? Yes, again. Paste. This isn't a very exciting uh, cash from financing, but what are we gonna do? Okay, sum these up. So pre forex changing cash, basically just add these up. So what did you get from operations? Okay. What did you get from investing? And what did you get from financing? And then forex adjustment, that's another thing. Like I'm just gonna leave it zero. I'm not even gonna project that because that's just I'm just gonna do no assumption there. Um, and then sum these up. Move it over to the right. Okay, so that's our net change in cash. Alright, so now all that's really left is to feed this stuff back into the balance sheet. So how do we do that? Other current liabilities is that plus that, or you could have done it the other way around where you write that. You know what? I'm just gonna let's just do this. These are staying the same. Some of these and go to the right. A lot of financial modeling is control R. Okay, totally. 
there it is. Summit. All right, make sure I'm still recording. I have 45 minutes. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Other long term assets we're keeping the same. Cash. What's cash going to be? Cash is going to be cash in the year before, plus your net change in cash. Uh oh, that's no good. We're going to have to we're going to have to deal with our assumptions because if not, then uh, this company is going to go not have enough current assets to meet its liabilities because their cash is negative. But we can deal with that. Alright, so total assets. Um, that plus and pp and &E plus total current assets and stock paid in capital that's not going to change retained earnings that is going to be last year's retained earnings plus we know from accounting that what goes into retained earnings is net income so net income to retained earnings and minority interest it's going to stay the same all right we're getting close to the finish line <coughs> so here we are close to the finish line okay just said it's like okay equity just adding all these up. Oops. So we have current liabilities plus total liabilities plus total equity. And all right, so why? So now we have some problem, which is balance sheet's not balancing. So what is the difference? It's, probably, it's usually a sign problem in the cash flow statement. Let's just figure out what, how big the difference is. 66. Oh, okay, I see here. I see something here that looks like 66. Is that 66? Gonna find. I'm gonna search throughout this workbook because sometimes, uh, sometimes this works. 66.4. Okay, so we don't know exactly why it's not balancing. Let's see. Oh, okay. Here's a problem, right? How did we go from total liabilities to this? So what I should have done here, this happens all the time, is you add that there, and This is fun. This is this is live live troubleshooting your model. Okay, so I'm not actually adding those two together. We should add seventy four ninety five long term assets. 
Hmm. Oh, here's 66.4. This is other assets. So let's figure out if that's Oh, and the reason why is okay. I said this was going to be zero, but actually, I forgot that I added a projection for it. So let's just do um, that minus that. Now we should be good. So yeah, great way to troubleshoot your model um, when you look at, at the difference between, you know, total liabilities and equity and total assets. Um, the the amount of difference, I mean, it's just going to be somewhere on the balance sheet. You just have to look at the changes and and see where it is. I mean, there's other problems that can happen, but okay, great. So now our balance sheet balances, and we're basically. I mean, we're basically done. Uh, oh wait, we have to deal with the fact that we don't have enough cash. So, usually, I mean, a big way to deal with not having enough cash is to take out some financing. So let's see if we can either use some if logic or we can just change uh, I mean the easiest way to do it right is just say like okay well we're gonna just issue you know issue debt bam cash is positive 